some cards. Uh, if you notice anyone not here, send them a call, text, snap, something. All this social media stuff can, you can get a hold of. Remember to pray for our sick, shut-ins, those lost loved ones, police, firemen, EMS, and you know, all those that just work to make our lives easier. A trunk or treat coming soon, October 31st. We will start at 6 p.m. You're more than welcome to decorate your vehicle and hand out candy. We usually have a 
they pass on to kids. It'll be a youth series November 5th in Texture Canada at the Westside Church of Christ. Also, November, November 5th is a community wide Thanksgiving worship. I think that's in the afternoon, and there are more details coming, it says. Hey, this is an important announcement. I personally think it's important. There's a coat drive for House Up on the Rock. Um, you can deliver coats to St. Luke's, or I guess you can, I think you can bring them here and bring them here, and we will get them where they need to be. Uh, House Up on the Rock does good work, especially, I know they deal with a lot of the homeless and stuff like that. Some on the list to pray for, Gordon Norwood, uh, Jack Phipps, he will have tests a couple weeks. Uh, Linda G is going to have a heart test. David Lunder has fell and broken some bones. Eddie Clore had heart stints after he was here. Uh, Gary and Sandy Bolton are having treatments. Uh, Buddy Smith, who is Polly's son, is going to have uh, surgery but tomorrow. tomorrow. And remember Joanne, she fell and broke several bones. She did it upright when she fell. Uh, any other people we can call this? And I'll read some cards. David Archer. Linda Bowen. Oh, yeah, Rita Bowen. We mentioned her in class. That's Jessica Park Fair. Yeah, Sarah Lester and my cousin, both of them. We were at Lester Fair. Lester Fair. Tyler Lester. Tyler Ledford, he passed away? Okay. Oh. Um, supposed to announce this to the gospel meeting, singing and reunion at the historic Green Plains Church of Christ in Derricks, Arkansas. <coughs> and I don't know where that is. And I grew up in Green Plains, I think. I didn't know there was, a, I didn't know there was two Churches of Christ in Derricks, Arkansas. I have one to read here. It says, after 127 days, 3,000 hours, and 21,000 miles, the twin babies are home. <laughs> Jonathan and Destiny are slowly adjusting to their new journey. We had to find them a rent house ASAP because the falling house is going to be under construction soon. Thank you for all your prayers on our behalf. We love you all. Keep praying for fathers. I talked to Jonathan yesterday, and I thought, I didn't think it was fair. He told me that, you know, the hospital got the babies on a schedule, and they've been used to being in the hospital, and noise doesn't bother them. I thought, well, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> And one more card here. It says, to my church family, thank you so much for your concerns and prayers. If not for your prayers and the grace of God, I might not be here. I love you all, and may God bless you. Sammy Watson. And Sammy's here with us today. Oh, one other one we need to remember. Roland Nix is having some health issues, too. I don't think they are here today. Let's go to the Father in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the blessings in this life, Lord. We, uh, we thank you for the nice weather, the, the sunshine, the cool you give us. Lord, we just, uh, you bless us tremendously in this life, Lord. Lord, to come before you, we ask that you would be with those we lift up, we've mentioned, that are sick. Lord, those that are in sorrow, Lord, that just, those that just need some comfort in their life. We ask that Whatever it be that you can put your hand of comfort and peace on them, Lord, so that they can regain their strength if that's what it is, and Lord, just be comfort in this life. Lord, we just uh, we thank you for this congregation here. We pray that you continue to bless it. We pray that we can be examples to those in the world, Lord, that we can lead others to you. Lord, we just. Uh, Thank you for Jesus and his willingness to come down here and suffer and die. And because of that, we have eternal life with you. Lord, we just ask all these things in his name. Amen.
together for uh, uh, some great bread together this morning. I, I was thinking back, thinking back to the cross. We see the images of Christ in, in our work and, and on the forger behind us on Sunday mornings and uh, uh, the figure nailed to the cross. If you've ever studied anything that had to do with, with the Romans and their idea of the use of the cross, It don't take long to see just how cruel and inhuman that that process was for the individual to go through that. And if you take of, of, of the bread and, and the food of thine this morning, you should think about that. Think of our Christ and what he did. Seeing images in a in, in BJ's Bible at one time and it showed that uh, archaeologists had dug up a heel bone of an individual. That had been crucified. That spike was driven completely through the hill bone. Can you imagine the pain and the agony that someone would go through with that? And we think of our Christ, our Lord, putting himself through that. Not only putting himself through that, but while they were driving those spikes through his through his, his heel bone and his hands, he looked to the Father. And said, forgive them, forgive. He loved them so much, even those individuals, those, those centurion soldiers, the ones that were putting on that cross. He loved them so much to just forgive them because they don't know what to do. Please, dear Lord, forgive them. What's a love like that? I mean, we can't, I can't even comprehend. I mean, the first thing I'd want to do is figure out some way to get back at them. But he said, forgive them. They don't like what they do. Think about that as we take it as a Lord's Supper this morning. Dear Lord, we'll tell you, gracious Father, as we, as we come to this table now and we prepare to take this bread, we look back at the cross, we look back at the love that was shown that day. It's such a horrible, terrible image. Uh, the, the torture and the inhumane action that that cross, uh, that was dealt there on that cross, dear Lord. When we look at the Son, we look at his love for us, that he was willing to go through that. And not only go through it, go through it with love in his heart for those who are even doing that to him. As we take this, uh, this, uh, this bread, we need to remember that. We remember our Christ. We remember his love. Not only from the cross, but from his actions as he walks this earth. And from the words we say in, in the scriptures, dear Lord. As we take that, we thank you for this whole thing.
pray with me. Dear Lord, most heavenly gracious Father, Lord, as we now prepare to take this holy wine, which represents the blood of your shed at Calvary. Dear Lord, we know that uh, uh, that such a scene that day at Calvary that so many people looked at it in horror, but it's uh, only you could turn something like that into something so beautiful. The only hope that we have of everlasting life is that blood and the fact that Jesus was willing to, to allow that blood to be spilled for us, our blood for us, dear Lord. And we just take this holy wine and know what that represents, dear Lord. And may we all be good and drink it to the name of Christ. Most heavenly gracious Father, at, at this time we, we, we set this time aside, dear Lord, to, uh, to give back what you bless us with so richly every day in our lives, dear Lord. We ask, dear Lord, that you uh, help us to use this in a way that, that benefits your kingdom here on this earth, dear Lord. We can serve others, we can spread the word to others, dear Lord, and, and go through everything that we need to uh, to keep your word going, dear Lord. Bring others to you. Ask your Lord to bless us and bless us all for you to bring to you. Offering to be uh, take the uh, plate set up back here in the back uh, for that, and there is different ways online that if you want to give, you can give that away. Okay.
Let's stand if you're singing this next song. <clears throat> there is beyond the azure blue a dark still from human sight. He takes us with every new and break the world with his great might. There is a God. Some of us can remember a time when you knew that you had worshipped the Lord together in a church of Christ because you sang that song that we just sung together. Just I, I remember growing up, it seemed like we sang it every Sunday, and uh, it didn't get old. I, don't I, I love that song. But yet again, here we are. And it seems like, I was thinking about this this week, that it seems like every so often I begin a sermon by talking about how chaotic and crazy things are in the world. And it's because they are. I mean, it's, it's crazy. If, if you watch the news and, and if you pay attention to what's going on around us and, and even what's going on on the other side of the world, it is crazy and chaotic. Uh, Y'all know about what happened last Saturday on the Sabbath in Israel. Uh, 
we have not, at least in a, in a long time, not heard about that kind of brutality uh, being perpetrated. Uh, it's not new, it's happened before, but it's so shocking. And so we have, as we, we have just been inundated with, with pictures and stories as armies surround Israel. That's kind of interesting. Uh, maybe it's timely that we're beginning this study of Revelation. But, but things are, are just chaotic. And I don't, I don't want to be sensationalistic, and I do believe that we look at the things going on. And there have been times, many times, in world history where people have looked at the events going on and said, oh, it must be the end of time. Well, they, they, things are about to happen now, and this, this looks like Jesus will be here soon. And we know that Jesus hasn't come back yet, right? But I tell you, in my lifetime, I haven't ever seen things looking so much like some of the events that are described in Scripture as going to be taking place in the times before Jesus comes back. Now, I don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. But what I do know is this. Things are crazy and chaotic. I actually believe that we are probably already in World War III, not we as a nation, but the, the world. Uh, I do believe that, uh, that the things that are going on between Hamas and Israel and Israel's neighbors, that it's bigger than just what's going on in that part of the world. And uh, I, I do think that we need to be paying attention. I, listen, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Hopefully I'm always honest with you, but uh, when I think about the world that my 11-year-old son is growing up in, I think about the world that my, my grandkids are going to inherit, assuming that Jesus does tarry. I, I don't lose sleep at night, but it does cause me concern. So what do we do about it? What, what do we do? And it's not just the world and geopolitical issues that's going on. And by the way, it's not, I need to say, the political conflict that's happening, the things that are going on in this world. There's a spiritual battle going on. And it, it spills over into the, the world around us. So understand there are things going on in the other realm that affect what's going on that way and even is that way in our lives right here and right now. And, and so the book of Revelation speaks to things on a grand global scale, but it also speaks to things in a your family and my family and our congregation scale. So we can, when things get out of control, we've got some options. We can get mad, we can fight. Sometimes us humans are really good at doing that and, and fighting with each other and not necessarily the enemy. But we can, we can get mad. We can run scared. We can be paralyzed in fear. We can pretend like it doesn't exist and like things are not happening, kind of cover our eyes, cover our ears, and let's just keep our you know, head in the sand. Or maybe I think the better option is to examine, to look at, the events that are going on in light of Jesus Christ. Yeah. To dig into his word and to keep an eye on him. Yeah, I think it's important that we pay attention to what's going on around us. But may we never lose sight of the risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so whatever's happening here, whatever mess is going on here, may we keep our main focus on the Lord. So we know, we know that Revelation is the apocalypse. Uh, well, that, that has all kinds of connotations, but it really just means the unveiling. It's, it's the Lord is showing us some things that had been hidden. That's what this, this book is. It's, it's revealing. Now we know that, that there is a blessing, probably, probably multiple blessings 
for those who dig in to, to the message of this book. Today, the message that we, that we hear from Jesus is it's a commission. He, he says to John, write down the words. Write down what you see. And, and the message is not just for John, but it's, it's for the churches in Asia, and it's, it's for the church at Bypass Church of Christ, and really the church in all ages and times and settings. And so let's dig into it. I, John, your brother and partner, patient endurance that are in Jesus, was on the island called Patmos on account of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me. Now, we'll just pause here. Remember, John's there because he's experiencing persecution, and he is sending a message to Christians who are either already undergoing persecution or are about to be undergoing persecution or are about to be undergoing more tribulation. He receives this, this word. Uh, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Uh, obviously, all the days, are they belong to God, right? He creates all of them. He owns them. They're his. But when he talks about the Lord's Day here, there's special to the dead on the first day of the week. That's why this day is important and, and special and even holy. He sees this, he hears this voice. And notice this voice is like a trumpet. Now, he's not just using a, a simile here just because he's being creative. Part of what's happening, and listen, as they, what they read when they gathered on Sundays, Sunday mornings, Sunday nights, and at other times, they read from the Old Testament. And so as John is receiving this revelation, we're going to read these phrases that for, for them and for hopefully us too, remind us of things in the Old Testament. And so like a trumpet is going to remind them of Exodus 19. You may recall what happens in Exodus 19 is God shows up in a powerful way. By the way, God shows up here in Revelation 1 in a powerful way too. But in Exodus 19, that's when God show, showed up on Sinai. And it says in, in Exodus 19, the trumpet blast. And that it just kept getting louder and louder. And, then, and God spoke out of his presence on Mount Sinai. And so as they read like a trumpet, it wasn't just that this voice John is hearing is loud. This is to Smyrna and to Pergamum and to Thyatira and to Sardis and to Philadelphia and to Laodicea. These seven churches, and these were seven cities or towns in Asia Minor. This word is going out to those seven churches. But understand, as we've already mentioned, and I'm sure we'll probably mention again, seven is the number of completion. This is not just to those seven churches, but this message is for the church universal, the complete church. It's for us as well. Then I turned. I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me, and on turning, I saw seven golden lampstands. Now, it's interesting that that's the first thing he notices. Now, is the voice coming from the lampstands? Are they making the noise? Or the voice? No, it's not the lampstands that are making the noise or that are that are speaking. But that's the first thing he notices. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, that's important. Those lampstands. Again, this is one of those phrases that for for. Jews or Jewish Christians, for people who were familiar with the Word of God, they would have known that, oh, that I've heard that before. And, and so it harkens back to particularly Zechariah 4, uh, where we see lampstands. And these lampstands in, in that day uh, have to do with, first off, it was in, there was a, a lampstand, a big lampstand, in the temple, and it was to be kept lit all the time, kept burning all the time. 